Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make pineapple salsa. Hey, Sugar Spun Bakers. Today we are not going to be doing any baking. We're not turning on our oven. We are going to be making an easy, fresh pineapple salsa. I am going to be making this for my grandmother's 90th birthday celebration, and I think you're going to love it just as much as my family does. Now, the first ingredient you're going to need is three cups of finely chopped fresh pineapple. Now, I'll be honest, I do not ever cut my own pineapple. It's something I always make Zach do, so I'm a little nervous doing this for the first time ever on camera, and a little embarrassed to have admitted that to you. A lot of you know that Zach actually films these videos, so I'm feeling super judged right now while he's watching me. I usually don't need the whole pineapple to get three cups. I can usually get that out of half of a pineapple, but I'm going to cut all of it off the core to start. Whew, okay, that part's done. Wasn't so scary after all. Now, because this is a salsa and you want to get as much of every ingredient on your chip as possible, I like to make sure my pineapple is cut into pretty tiny pieces. I go for less than a half inch for every piece. That's one thing to watch out for. If you try to cut the pieces too small, you could end up shredding them. Let's get rid of any pieces that have a little bit of brown or green on them, just because that would be a tough spot to bite into when you bite into your salsa. I'm gonna try to be a little bit smarter about cutting this slice, make it a little easier for myself. This isn't even that hard. I can't believe I let myself become dependent on Zach to cut pineapple. Before I go any further, I want to measure what I have. As I said, or I think I said, you need three cups of pineapple. Let's go ahead and see what we have here. There's one, two, and would you look at that? Half the pineapple gave us three cups. Now the next thing you're going to need is one pepper and we're going to finely dice this one as well. Now, typically I like to use half of an orange pepper and half of a red pepper, just because I like to have those different colors in there, but my grocery store only had red, so that's what we're using today. Again, you wanna keep these pieces nice and small because this is a salsa. You want to be able to get a lot of variety on every chip that you dip. Next, we'll be adding some tomato because what is a salsa without tomato? Now you'll need about two thirds cup of finely chopped tomato. And generally I recommend using Romas. They're great for salsas, but my grocery store only has really pitiful specimen right now. So I'm using these tomatoes on the vine, which are much prettier and much better tasting right now. So I'm going to cut these and I'm going to scoop out the seeds. This looks so much better than the Romas I was using. Just finely chop it. You'll be a finely chopping pro by the time you're done with this recipe. And then you should go make my cowboy caviar where everything also needs to be finely diced. Let's see how we're looking. Let's say we're right at about two thirds cups. We'll go ahead and add that to our bowl. Next, you need two thirds cup of finely diced red onion. You could use a white onion if you prefer. I just really like the flavor from a red onion. Now I'm using half an onion because I just used the other half to make my avocado salsa. So this one was ready to go. We'll chop it nice and fine. I like to cut these really skinny rows carefully, of course. And this is a very potent red onion. Let's see how far that got us. Say that's about two thirds cup. Maybe add a little bit more because I really like onion. Add that in with our pineapple and our other ingredients. Next, we are going to bring the heat with some jalapenos. Now, how much jalapeno you use really depends on personal preference. I recommend starting with about two to three tablespoons of finely chopped jalapenos without the seeds and then adjusting according to your taste and according to how hot your jalapenos are. Now, always remove the seeds. You can throw a few into the mix if you would like, but even a few seeds can make this salsa really hot and spicy, so proceed with caution. So let's see how many tablespoons that jalapeno got us. There's one, two. I'm going to use all of it because it's just a little bit over three tablespoons. But again, you really wanna go according to your own personal preference and how much heat you can handle. Next, we need one third cup of finely chopped cilantro. and that looks pretty good. I'll tell you, making salsa is a lot less precise than baking. I would never tell you to measure your flour that way. 
All right, you're done chopping for now, but we've got a few more ingredients to add, starting with the juice of a lime. You wanna use two tablespoons of fresh lime juice. Definitely recommend fresh over bottled. I'll usually just squeeze the lime or roll it between my palm and the counter just to get as much juice out of it as possible before I squeeze it into my salsa. Smells so good in here right now. We'll also be adding 3 fourths teaspoon of finely ground sea salt. Now, I start with 3 fourths teaspoon, but you're going to taste test after you've mixed everything together and add more as needed. Next, I like to add just a little bit of ground cumin. This is 1 fourth teaspoon. You could leave it out if you'd like, but I love the extra flavor it adds. We'll also add some freshly cracked black peppercorn. Just going to add a little bit for now, and then we'll taste test and add more as needed. All right, let's stir everything together. This looks so good. Now, once you have everything mixed together, you'll want to cover the bowl and place it in the fridge. And ideally, you would let it sit for several hours. This will help the flavors really meld together. Now, before you do that though, you're going to want to grab some salty tortilla chips and you're going to want to taste test. We just want to make sure we have the right amount of salt and pepper and even lime juice. And of course, if you want to add more jalapeno, you would do that now as well. This doesn't always happen, but this is perfect. I don't need to change a thing. Now, you know it's good when you can't stop sampling. I'm gonna finish this off, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe. And if you try this one out, please let me know what you think.